how can you relate your SHS course to nursing or how will the course you did in SHS benefit you in nursing? So that's what we are looking at today. And we'll focus on general arts because they have the most subjects here. So we'll look at general arts and some of the subjects also overlap. So you can use the same principle or the same response for the other subjects too. So if you're interested, let's get right into it. There are two ways that I will tackle this question if I were in your shoe. Number one is to give a summary. So a summary of all the courses you did, especially the elective subjects, the elective subjects. You just give an overview of what you learned in SHS. For example, I did general arts in SHS and my electives, I did elective maths, economics, geography and government. So I can give a summary of the four subjects and how it will help me in nursing or focus on one subject and how it will help you in nursing. So I can either focus on elective maths or government or economics or geography and how it will help me in nursing school. So looking at general arts, the electives are many. There's geography, economics, history, government, ICT, elective maths, languages, religious studies. If you'll be taking the subjects one by one, let's look at how you can form your, quest your answer, okay? So the first one we'll look at is geography. And what is geography? Geography is the study of places and people and the relationship they have with their environment. So if you want to use geography for your answer, you can say geography will help me understand the relationship between where a person lives and the kind of health conditions the person can come with. For example, someone living in a swampy area will have problems with insects like mosquitoes and so that person is prone to having malaria very often or you can leave it at for example someone living in a swampy area who have issues with insects and then they might ask you a follow-up question like in my interview they ask a follow-up question like so what kind of insects are very common in swampy areas you can say mosquitoes so what diseases do mosquitoes cause malaria so from your answer you can get follow-up questions so with this question you have to be prepared for follow-up question another thing you can say under geography is that geography will help me to be able to trace the geographical location of my clients especially for follow-up visit i can use my geography to be able to read maps and know where my clients are located hmm? or you can also say the geographical location of people affects their access to clean water good nutrition and easy access to health because if someone is living in a location where there is no health facility or is living in a very remote area you will understand why their health seeking behavior is different from people living in the big town where they have easy access to health care hmm? and for this one you can also expect a follow-up question like what will someone in a remote area do when they are sick so you can say something like that is where they'll start falling on herbal medicine or brewing their own medicines at home to take care of themselves, something like that. OK, so we got three answers under geography. So moving on, we go to economics. Economics will help you to understand the financial status of your clients and how that impacts their health circumstances because you realize that the financial status of people can be linked with some of the diseases that they suffer for example we think it's rich people that suffer hypertension diabetes heart problems and all of that and poor people also suffer from malnutrition because they are not getting enough to eat and communicable diseases like polio and the like or you can also say that in the financial status of people also influences their health seeking behavior for example someone who has a lot of money will go to the hospital because he can afford good health care when they are sick but someone who is poor may want to do home remedies because they don't have the money to go to the hospital so they may do home remedies until things get out of hand before they come to the hospital something like that so economics will help you understand financial status and how it will affect the health of your clients Moving on, you can look at government. Government is a study of the systems that a particular group of people put in place to control the affairs of their state or community. So how will government help you? Understanding governance will one, help you to acknowledge the leadership of each community and help you to address them appropriately in your line of work. 
that's one aspect or you can say the study of government has helped me to understand the fundamental human rights and duties of every citizen and working as a nurse will also put me in the position to advocate for the fundamental human rights of my clients so it will help me to recognize when my clients rights are being abused and for this one if you put it this way you might be asked a follow-up question to state some of the fundamental human rights so you can list some of them like the right to life the right to education equality before the law freedom of expression freedom from discrimination so so those are some of the fundamental human rights that you can list the next one is history. Let's look at history. The study of history, history is the study of the past and how past events has shaped or formed societies and communities and, and history will help you understand how people from different cultures and different societies behave. So how will it help you in nursing? In, in nursing, you work with different kinds of people from different cultural backgrounds, different ethnicity. So understanding people from different ethnic groups and their norms will help you to adapt easily to their lifestyle and work in harmony with them. For example, I am an airway and when you go to an airway man's house, the airway man has to welcome you. Hey, where's your low? That means you're welcome. Then you greet. Oh, good morning. Indeed now, indoor now, piano now. Then you state why you are in the person's house. But when I came to work in the fancy land, I realized that with them, you would have to greet. You, the person coming to the fancy man's house, will have to greet before they welcome you. So you see, it's reversed. Okay, so knowing how different ethnic groups behave will help you to work with them in harmony. The same thing applies to religious studies. Religious studies will help you understand the different kind of religions and their practices so that you don't offend them. For example, someone who is a Jehovah Witness might be on the ward and in need of blood, but they don't take blood transfusion. So will you force the blood on them? No, you have to find alternate means of boosting the blood of uh, that patient. So understanding religion and religious practices will help you plan your work and your nursing activities for such a patient without offending them. So with the religious studies, it has to be in relation to the religious studies you did. If you did Christian religious studies, then you have to focus on the Christian religious studies. If you did the Islamic religious studies, you have to focus on the Islamic religious studies. So the belief system of Christians, the belief system of Muslims, you have to, you know, know those ones and then you can apply it here. Okay. List examples of some of the response you give to the subjects we've already done and let's see how it goes in the comment section. The next one will be languages and this one is based on if you are conversant with the languages you did in, S uh, in SHS and you know that you can speak the language then you can say that oh if I encounter someone speaking this language I can easily interpret and be able to care for them because we can speak the same language or I'll be available when somebody speaking this language comes to the facility for interpretation so that you can give that person care. And this one, you can be asked a follow-up question like, they can give you a sentence and ask you to translate. Don't go and, bah, don't go and lie, yo. So if you know you can't speak the language that you did in, SN, in SHS, you can leave this one out, okay? And focus on the others. And then the last one would be ICT. ICT is computers. And today, in today's uh, hospitals, we are trying to move from the paper system to the computerized system. So when you go to some of the big, big hospitals, you see nurses behind computer asking you questions and entering data. So with ICT, you can say we are living in the computer age where everything is computerized. And I've been to the hospital and I've seen nurses behind the computer asking questions and inputting it in the computer. So my knowledge in ICT will help me to easily learn the computer system in the hospital and also be able to input data whilst I take care of my patients. This is subject by subject. And then, so if you want, you can summarize geography and economics together and say, geography will help me to understand the kinds of diseases that is associated with the location of people. For example, someone in the swampy area will have problems with insects like mosquitoes and so will have problems with malaria. And economics will also help me understand that the financial status of that person, whether rich or poor, will determine how easily that person will go and seek healthcare. So put examples in the comment section 
with this video i'll be under the comment section to look at your responses how you summarize things or how you put your answers and make corrections when there is the need to so leave your answers in the comment section let's draw draw and see how well you can put yourself how well you can put your answer together for your nursing interview I hope this was helpful like it share and subscribe if you've not done that yet and i wish you all the best in your nursing interview bye for now